Hey guys, in this video, I really want to go through and cover everything that you see in regards to the part component settings. So starting from the top and just working our way down. Now I'm going to be focusing on the site here. Now starting from the top, we have possible parts. Now this is specific to firearm customization and basically what attachments are allowed on this part component. So you can see here we have the hollow site, the two 30 millimeter mounts, and the thermal site. Now, if I try to add something like a stock to this by using add part, so for example, site, uh, we'll grab that part component, and we'll search for add part, and I try to do a stock like so, the return value would be false. So basically, it wouldn't actually add the part to it because it is not a part that is set to be compatible in this list. So all your possible parts are going to be what is compatible for this slot. So the idea behind it is, for example, this is mounted to a Picatinny rail. Any attachment that uses that form of attachment will be listed in the possible parts, unless you, for whatever reason, want to revoke that ability. So that would be for more, I guess, arcade style games. So that's what that's used for. Next up is the default part. So by default, I have it set to the hollow site. So if I hit play, you can see here we have the hollow site. If I want to remove that, then we have nothing. There is no optic there by default. And then I can also switch to things like the thermal. And that will allow the thermal site to spawn, like so. And you cannot add anything that is not set in the possible part. So if I try to add the stock as a default part, you can see it just does nothing. So again, it is in line with the compatibility. So I'm going to revert that back to the hollow site. Now, the component name, that is used for basically whatever you kind of want to use it for. So for example, I use that for my fire customization. So I call this one sites. So when I come over here, I have this array of sites, or I have this uh, option called sites, and all the stuff that I have for possible parts right inside of it. So again, like the hollow site, 30 millimeter mounts, and the thermal site. Now minimum and maximum. So what are those? Let me actually revert that to zero and I'll show you what that does here in a bit. So these are specific to basically offsetting your part. So being able to move it on, you know, whatever you have it attached to. So for example, if I click on this site, I can move it forward by 10 centimeters and back to what would be zero. So I can kind of position it, you know, wherever I want. But it's only able to be moved within this range. So you can't actually extend beyond the value of 10. Now you can also go, for example, with the stock, you can go to a negative value. So here you can see I have the minimum set to negative 10 and the maximum set to zero because I want to move this that direction. So that way we can extend the stock out. So if I click on the stock, I can drag it out and in. And you can see when I drag it out and I aim, it pushes the gun away. When I drag it back in and I aim, it's back and up close. So the only thing that's required for that to work is basically setting it to be inverted. So when I click on the stock blueprint and look over here, you can see it has invert moving offset enabled. So that allows it to go in reverse towards the minimum. So it basically flips it. Now the set part initial offset at display min max. So that is in relation to these settings here. So to, the display part min max is kind of there to help you visualize it. So all this stuff in the preview is there to help you visualize how you want the part to like it's to be positioned and to help you figure out what origin points you want to have or if you need to modify them and all that. So starting with here, if I slide it forward, you can see it moves the part forwards. So I'll leave it at 6.6 .6 and I'll enable set part initial offset at display min max. So now when I hit play, you can see my site is quite a bit forwards. Now if I revert that or just uncheck this and I hit play, you can see the site is back where it's supposed to be. So I can just reset that and it puts the site right back where it's supposed to be or just the part. Now the display part index, I'll cover what this is here in a second. That is in relation to your possible parts. So it allows you to easily kind of see what does what. So if I go to one, it'll be the 30 millimeter mount, two will be the 30 millimeter mount railed, and three will be the thermal site. 
then I can revert it back to zero and do that. And if you have a custom mesh that you want to test instead, you can go to preview static and just change it here. So if I select the hat, you can see it shows as the hat. And it also sets the display part index to negative one. Now let's assume it's a skeletal mesh. You do the exact same thing. So let's pretend it's the grenade. You select the grenade. And again, everything still works in the same manner. So I'll revert this back to zero. So that way we have the hollow site again. And you can see it's reset the meshes accordingly. So that was a big part of the overhaul for this system. Now, next up, or lastly, we have this offset snap distance. Now this is based upon, or the intended purpose was to be based upon your part attachment type. So for example, this is a Picatinny rail. The gap between each notch is roughly one centimeter. So what you can see here is I have Picatinny rail equals one, M lock equals four, key mod equals two, and no snapping, meaning like what it is now for this ability to just kind of move forward and back freely is to be zero. So for this, because it's attached to a Picatinny rail, I want to set it to one. So now you can see as I move this, it does not move, but once this value crosses one, it jumps forward. And once it crosses two, it jumps forward. Same thing as I keep going up, it goes up in increments to be lined up with the Picatinny rail. And that affects your actual in-game offset sliding as well. So if I drag this, you can see it now skips around as it fits it. So if I bump this up to like four to pretend it's an M lock, you can see I drag it up, we have one, two, and that's all. I just have two positions here that I can move between. Now you might be able to figure out if you're beyond elementary school math, like I am not, that four does not go into 10. So we go four, eight, 12, not four, eight, 10. So what this does is it'll actually modify your maximum to suit whatever value you have here. So for example, if you have this set to four and you have a maximum of 10, this will actually reduce to eight. So that way you can never go really, I guess you could say outside of the bounds or in any sort of in-between offset that you have set here. So it'll make sure that you do not go beyond or at some like weird in-between. So I'll revert that back to one. An example of one at four, which would be the, the M lock here on this handguard. Let me add a grip here. You can see as I move it forwards, we go up by four, we go back, and it's all in four centimeter increments like that. So that's what that is used for. Again, that's a brand new feature that'll be coming in a very near uh, update. I'm actually planning on submitting it in the next couple of days. But that pretty much sums up the gist of the part component. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. Obviously, there's a bunch of functions that I have not covered yet, but I will be going more in depth later on with kind of how to use some of them. So that's going to wrap this video up. If you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to join my Discord and I'll try to help you out. And as always, if you're interested in this plugin, you can find a link for it down in the description below. So I'll see you in the next video.